Good morning. Right, so this morning what are we going to do? We are going to put LED indicators on the front of the uh, um, spork line. Now, um, I've already cheated. I've done one already because I've I searched the internet. I looked through YouTube and Google and I couldn't find anywhere where they had... Um, on a, on the, this Obviously this is a, a bike for the British market so on British bikes and I think Europeans as well um, the bulb type that you have this is the the bulb that come out the bulb type type that you have is called an 1156 and it's got these little pins um, opposite each other on the American market they tend to have 1157 which means these pins are offset because instead of just one point uh, um, that connects to the uh, filament you have two because you have a dual filament um, because they tend to have uh, riding lights or daylight lights and indicators whereas in the UK and I think Europe you just have the one for the indicator so if you're replacing if you're putting these pro beam which is what I'm doing you put in these uh, pro beam indicators on um, they come ready in the UK with an 1156 uh, sort of socket, if you like, that fits into the indicator. Um, but in and in the States, this comes with an 1157. So all you have to do is literally you get hold of the um, new indicator, you take the bulb out, you plug that in, put the lens back on, job done, it's finished. But in the UK, because you've only got um, the two wires that come to the single element. To do the uh, white light around the outside, you have to run another cable. So that's what we're going to do today. So what this does, let's just take this off a second. So you can see, perhaps a bit clearer. What you've got with this light is you've got um, orange uh LEDs in the center for your indicator and then around the outside you've got white what I call running lights and normal normal uh, status is when you're driving along you've got your running lights on the moment you put your indicator on the light the white lights around the outside go out and the indicator comes on when you finish with the indicator um, the indicator goes out and the white light comes back on um, but because this is in the UK the white light needs a separate feed. So what we're going to do today is fit this and run a separate feed. Now like I said, I've already done one because I couldn't see anywhere where they explained how you did this. They showed lots, there was lots and lots of um, videos on YouTube on how you uh, connect this particular Pro Beam LED up with an 1157 uh, bulb but not with 11.56 so this is what we're going to do this morning now let me just show you what I've done so far okay so first thing I, I did is I covered the tank up and the um, front mud guard or fender uh, with a nice thick towel I don't want to drop any tools or bolts or anything on them and, and mark them so there's the stock indicator that, that the bike comes with and what I've done over this side is I've put the uh, Pro Beam LED on, um, and I'll show you what that looks like in a minute when I uh, when I light light it up. Now what I've done is I've run the cable from here. You have to drill a, an extra hole in the back of the reflector, which I'll go through with you in a minute, um, and then you run a new cable along the um, handlebar through there and pick up a feed from the headlight, which I've got disconnected here. Uh, that's hanging out and the feed that I pick up is this uh, blue wire on the right hand side that's the feed to the um, halo on the um, headlight so I want the halo on the headlight and the ha little halos on the indicators to come on at the same time so of having done this side we're now going to do this side now it's very it's very simple it is and it is a very simple job but it is very time consuming because it is also very, very awkward. All it is, is plugging a new LED in there and running a cable and connecting it up. Piece of cake. 
but it really isn't as simple as that. It is simple, but it's just it's just awkward. So we'll go through that together, and then you can see what mistakes I've made, and hopefully um, you'll you'll do it easier. So let's uh, let's have a look at the indicator and the white light um, to start with, and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, I don't know how clear this is going to come out. Um, so turn the ignition on. Now that's the indicator uh, with the LED. Let me uh, just touch this on here. I'll turn that off. The white uh, running, what I call the running light, is around the outside. And the moment you put the indicator on, the white light goes out and the indicator comes on. Turn the indicator off and the white light comes back on. So that's what we're looking at today. That's why um, uh, the 1156 won't work. That's why you have to run extra cable because you want the extra feed for that, for that white light. Okay, so first thing we need to do is to, uh, there's a little notch at the, normally at the bottom Put a flat screwdriver in there very carefully, just twist that and that comes off. Take the bulb out, put them to one side. Then we need to take this reflector out, just pull it forward um, so that we can drill a hole in the back to run the cable uh, through this existing grommet that's See in the back here, uh, which isn't easy to do, but we'll manage it. So very, very gently, because you don't want to chip any of this chrome. Um, I've got two screwdrivers with plastic on the shafts to try and prevent that. Put the screwdriver between the reflector and the little bit of rubber and just ease it out a little bit and do the same with the other screwdriver. Just ease it out a little bit. And it's just starting to come now. There we go. He says. And as you can see, there's a there's a little rubber boot that goes on the back in a minute when I get it out. Right, so there's a there's a little rubber boot. Let's put that down there. That's a little rubber boot that holds this little reflector in. So the new, the new, uh, let's just try and pull that forward so that it's not in the way. There we go. Right, so the new indicator, where is it? <coughs> Excuse me. There's a, there's a little slot in the back that you can put a screwdriver in. Um, but that just pushes in there and connects up just as though it was a bulb. What we've got to do is to um, get this white wire, which is the, um, I'll call it the running light, the white running light around the outside of the indicator. This is the wire that we've got to route to the headlight to pick up the, the feed. Now I don't know whether that's the right place to pick a feed up from. Um, but for me, it's a nice long wire, it's just about the right size. I want, it, I want these to come on when the headlight comes on, so that's what I've gone for. I've thought that is the right place, that's the right place for me. Um, so be careful with this, it's printed circuit. You don't want to damage it, you don't want to do any harm to that. Um, but that fits in there like that. What we have to do is to drill a hole in the back of this 
for this cable to route through and then out the other side. So let me just get my drill and I'll drill a hole in there and then we'll, uh, it's only plastic, um, and then we'll, uh, we'll take it from there. Now we want about um, a 1 8 hole in here um, for the cable to go through. But what I've done, I've put a really small, the smallest drill I've got, because this is plastic, I don't want to shatter it. I don't want to, uh, you know, do any damage. So I'm just going to go in with a little pilot hole first. And it doesn't matter really where you, where you put it. I'm going to put it as close to the, um, the centre as I can, because obviously the um, uh, indicator is going to fit on top of this. And I don't want to, uh, don't want to squash it up any. So I'm just going to drill a nice little hole through there. And then I'm going to put the eighth drill through there um, to run the cable through. Okay, so there's the hole that I've drilled in there. So that will go, the wire will go through that hole and then out the back of the um, uh, of the rubber boot and then we've got to go oh that's on the floor and then we've got to go through that hole there um, where the uh, little grommet is so we've got to take that grommet in the back we've got to take that out now and that's that's that grommet there this one so that's going to be a tight fit so let me fight to get that out um, and the way to do it is you I'm going to put a screw a screwdriver in in there to try and push the flange in while I wiggle that about and then I'll get that out so let me get back to you when I've done that okay so what I used in this little grommet I've got the grommet out um, and that just takes a little bit of wiggling but it does come out um, and then where the wires go through, where the existing wires go through the grommet, it's very, very tight. So what I've used is a little watchmaker screwdriver, but one with a Phillips head, not with a uh, flat head, because that's sharp and I didn't want to dig into the wires. So I just put it on the flat of the cable and pushed it through to make a bit of a, uh, a hole in there. Not a hole, but just give it a bit of room. Um, give the cable a bit of room. So this now can plug into the uh, the light that's in the just that goes in there just get this out of the way again Now this rubber boot needs to come off of the front of this. When when this all goes, because you can see there's a rubber seal on here. So when this goes in here, this rubber seal needs to be pushed back out of the way. Um, otherwise there's not enough room for this light. So that needs to just be pushed back. And then the white wire we take that little rubber boot back so the white wire goes through that little hole that we drilled just take it nice and slowly you don't want the plastic ripping any of the um, insulation away we'll put this cable in a um, some sleeving some protective sleeving in a minute right so that goes in there that then goes through Pull that rubber boot out of the way, that cable goes through the back. And 
and then poke that through the hole that is left when you pulled the grommet out of the back I did say it's a simple job but fiddly and it really is fiddly but we'll get there Okay, so that's all in place. We won't put this in yet because we've got to get the grommet back in and we might have to um, get the screwdriver in here to help the, help the grommet in. What we've now got to do is where I've made, um, broke the seal with my little watchmaker screwdriver in the grommet, we've now got to get this cable through that grommet alongside the other existing cables. So that's going to take a bit of fiddling. Let me uh, uh, just twiddle that through there and uh, I'll get back to you. Okay, so um, once you've loosened, once you've put that little um, watchmaker screwdriver in the grommet and moved it around, you break the seal between the grommet and the, and the existing cable. The grommet then can be pulled off of the cable and with a little bit of Vaseline on the end of this white cable managed to get it through pull the grommet back on the cable and that's all all in place now so the next tricky little job that you have to do and that that took probably about in all honesty probably took about five minutes to do that it was very fiddly because there's very little room to move um, now what we got to do is get the grommet back into the hole at the back of this um, light fitting so uh, again that's going to be a bit of a fiddly job but it's just a matter of squeezing it and helping it through with a, a screwdriver but be very very careful you don't want to scratch the chrome so just literally you put a screwdriver and just gradually ease it in and then once it comes in the back of here you can just pull it through but don't scratch be careful not to scratch this and don't um, put the screwdriver against any cables. You don't want to um, damage any installation on, insulation on the cables. So let me just get that grommet back in. Okay, so that, that grommet is now back in there. Just make sure that it's the, the flange of the grommet is pulled flat inside so it's all nice and seated correctly. Um, and now this can go back in. So again, don't put the this little rubber boot over this reflector because there won't be enough room. So just push that back in there. As far as it will go. And then just got to twist this around so that it all fits in behind the, the light. Then you've got your new lens, just put the little notch at the bottom of the lens at the bottom, and that goes in there. And that clips in there. So this now needs to go all the way through the handlebars through to the headlight. So to do that we need to take the um, switch uh, housing off so that we've got access to the slot underneath it for the cables to go. So um, let me just take that off. I've dropped the brake housing down and I've removed the um, switch housing. Now what we've got to do is to put a little draw cable through there um, to the centre of the handlebars. So what I've what I've used on the other side what 
what I used on the other side is I've got a piece of uh, um, twin and earth cable, 2.5 twin and earth cable and I've stripped the um, earth out of it and I've used that as my pull wire. So that will now go, um, I'll start from the centre, feed it through uh, to here. So that took me ages to do on the other side. Um, so I'm going to fiddle about with that now um, just to get that through. Let me just show you where I am. So I think that's fair enough. So I'm going to put the cable in here pushing it that way up to up to the uh, to the, the switch housing. So let me uh, fiddle about do that. Once I've got that through we'll catch up again. So a lot of fiddling and twisting and pushing and pulling and huffing and puffing and cursing and I've got the cable through. So now what I need to do is to put some sleeving on this white cable So let's just measure that up. Okay, so that's pulled through, took a little bit of fiddling. This um this sleeving is three mil. Um I think you can get two mil, but I think two mil this is such a flimsy little cable, um it only just about pushes the length of that tubing. Um so if you've got any smaller than that it might be quite difficult to get it through. You'd have to fish it through again with another draw wire. Right now I'm going to need to connect it to that draw wire uh, with a bit of tape. So I've now taped the indicator, the new indicator wire to the draw wire and now we've just got to very gently feed it through. You don't want to tug this. Um, friction burns inside here with this uh, copper cable you don't want and also you don't want to pull it out of this bit of tape. So. Just make sure that you've got this, you haven't got this wrapped around anything when you do it. So nice and easy is the name of the game. Feed it in gently and pull it very gently. Don't get all sort of excited and unnecessary. Just do it very, very slowly. We only want to do this once. And I've seen the tape has started to come through. There it is. Right. We can dispense with this now. Like I said, it is nothing complicated in this. It's just really awkward. Well, that's okay. We can do awkward. Right, so what we'll do now, before we do anything this end, we'll put all this back together on here. So let me just bolt that back on. So that's the um, brake and switch housing back on. Just double check the, um, the brakes work, the uh, brake light switch works that you you've managed to, um, oops, managed to uh, bolt it on correctly so that um, just turn the ignition on make sure the brake light isn't on and then just check that it comes on uh, and also make sure that um, your accelerator your throttle works properly right having done all that let's switch our attention to uh, 
connecting the wires up, shall we? Okay, so let's uh, let's just trim these two up. together connect them together with that little crimping lug tight in there. Now we're going to connect another little bit of cable. So those two are joined together. That one goes in there. bit slack not too much cut that off and then what we're going to do is we've got this little tool this little crimping lug here that slides over the existing cable take that out slides over the existing cable the new one goes in alongside it And you get your pliers and you clip, clamp all that together. Make sure you only do those two. And that is now connected to the blue and then you just pull that over the top clamp that down to secure it. Job done. Right, now moment of truth. Shall we see whether it all works? Right, let's turn the ignition on. And my um, little halos come on. I don't know how well that comes out on camera because LEDs and cameras don't always go together. Let's try my right indicator. So the white light goes out and the amber comes on. And then the other one. Again the white light goes out and the amber comes on. So this just now needs to be connected in there. And the bolt put back. And the, um, the chrome ring put on the front and that's job done right all back together let's see uh, what it looks like <coughs> that's how i fitted the pro beam led turn signals uh, the pro beam are by custom dynamic so go on their website have a look at that i actually bought these ones direct from um sykes at uh, holly davidson dealership um i think they was about 80 pounds something like that but this is the only i haven't found anywhere on the on youtube or the internet on how you fit these pro beam indicators um to a british bike or a European bike that is uh, fitted with uh, 1156 um, uh, sockets for the uh, light bulbs. 
everywhere I looked they was all these lights fitted um, to American bikes and the guys in the States dead easy like I said before you take the lens off um, you plug the new socket in put the new lens on it was as easy as that if you've got 1157 um, light bulb sockets but in the UK we haven't got 1157 we've got 1156 so if you're going to fit these you've got to run those wires it's it's dead easy as far as um, simplicity is concerned but it is a very awkward job so you know to be to be fair you know you've got to give yourself a couple of hours to do that um, but there we go job done I'm well pleased with that move on to my uh, my next little uh, accessory I've got to fit to it so until next time you guys take care bye bye